In this Throne and Liberty video, I bring you a complete guide on how to get epic gear. The easy ways, the grindy ways, and the much harder ways. How's it going, guys? My name is DPJ. Now, the winner of my previous 1000 plus Lucent giveaway you can see on screen. Now, if this is you, hit me up on my Discord link down below to claim your winnings. Now, do you guys want to win 1000 plus Lucent? Well, it's as simple as this. Drop a like on this video, leave me a comment down below and make sure you are subscribed. The more I see you active on my Throne and Liberty videos, the more of a chance you have of winning. So good luck everybody. So getting that epic gear, that purple gear in Throne and Liberty is one of the many end game goals players have and are chasing further in the game. Today we look at, I believe, all the options you have in doing so and obtaining that epic gear. Now a lot of players may be struggling to get that epic purple gear, but hopefully today I can help you out and easily do so. So there are actually some easy ways to get epic gear and we'll cover these first, so let's go. So I was searching high and low for an easy way to get an epic bow, uh, and well, within the space of two hours I had one. In fact, it was probably less than this, as I was doing other things at the same time. So how did I do it? Well, I did so by spending 1500 contract coins with the contract coin merchant found within many towns around the map. If you go into the contract coin merchant's inventory, scroll down to the bottom, you will see this precious epic chest which rewards you the choice of any of these containing epic weapons. Yes, you get to pick a weapon upon you buying this. So 1500 contract coins probably seems like a rough time to you, but actually it really isn't. If you go to Olin, the contract manager within the Kenina village, her contracts reward you 30 contract coins per completion. That means you have to do 50 of these contracts. Now the contracts you pick up can be as easy as head to a certain point, take out certain enemies and the contract is therefore done. Or they could be as simple as going to a certain area and looting three individual spots. And these are the contracts I'd recommend you going for. Now as soon as you pick one up, you can refresh her stock in regards to these contracts. So you can just keep refreshing them until you get the ones that are easy to do or all take place within the same area area or around the same enemies and you'll get these five because you can only pick up five at a time you'll get these done in mere minutes now in doing this you need to make sure you have at least 50 of those contract rights otherwise you'll be limited to 10 per day because as you probably do not know you are limited on how many contracts you can do to start you have 60 contract rights but these go down as you do a contract now you do get 10 given to you per day and these will stack which means no matter how many contracts you've done in the past, you will eventually be able to open one of these chests. I mean, this means it's literally 10 lots of five contracts, which isn't too bad when you think about it, and you get a piece of epic gear. This is by far the quickest way I've seen in the game. So yes, guys, accumulate 1500 contract coins and do what you gotta do and grab this chest. Simple. Another amazing and yet easy way to get epic gear is the weekly missions. Within your inventory, select the weekly missions tab and here guys you can see 4 options per week where you can indeed get that epic gear. Here though in regards to their drops is a bit random but it's still epic gear you may need. So you can see world, co-op dungeons, guild and pvp. Within each section there are 3 challenges, complete these challenges within the space of the week and you get to select one of the 3 pieces in that section. If you complete only 2 of the 3 challenges in each section you only get to pick from 2 different epics, it's as simple as that. Last week guys I literally did 1 challenge here so I could only pick 1 epic, but this week though I am going for the lot. Now what I will say is, if you need a guild, you can always join mine. I play on the Wind Whisper server, all details in the video description via my Discord. Come join, let's slay together. I mean, the guild sections are quite easy to do and complete too. I mean, donating 10 lots of gold per hour is a simple and cheap process for an epic piece. Also donating the host resources too, these increase that guild rep, which will allow you to fill in these spaces and get that epic. Yeah. 
Now within the weekly missions, I feel the co-op dungeons are probably the easiest to do along with the uh, world section requirements. Uh, resistance contracts like I just spoke about, doing 50 like I mentioned earlier will not only give you 1500 of those contract coins to purchase that chest, but you'll also get a slot here for an epic piece. Also the Mystic Portals, 25 in total, purchase the Mystic Keys from the Contract Coin Merchant, find and locate those red fiery balls around the map, trigger these and a portal can spawn in somewhere on the map, locate the portal inside of the stated area and not only will you get nice rewards, but it's also progress towards the weekly missions which will reward you an epic item. Now the dimensional contract tokens here for the co-op dungeons we just spoke about are something you get 900 per day of. This is added to your total tally of 4500 and it's capped here so you want to be using these on a daily. Now this is a currency used to enter and complete dungeons to get that loot and using up to 4500 per week will give you the choice between 3 epics. Keep in mind the requirements here when completed will allow you to select epic gear upon the weekly cycle ending so you won't actually be able to pick up the epics here until the week ends so keep that in mind. Another way to get epics are those level 50 dungeons, those co-op dungeons. These I understand most players watching this probably feel they're at a stage now where they will enter these dungeons and kind of hold players back or just progressing past this stage. And the reason you're watching this video is so that you can hold your own within these level 50 co-op dungeons which I completely understand guys but I feel it's necessary to actually state that you can get epic pieces from level 50 co-op dungeons although they are pretty hard unless you have a full team of people who know what they're doing and although these epic gear pieces are still random drops there's no guarantee you'll get them level 50 co-op dungeons are still a good way if you're able to do these level 50 dungeons to earn that epic gear okay so another place you can get and work towards that epic gear is the lithograph book now coming here guys and scrolling down you will come to that epic gear now to unlock the epic gear from these sections you need to require and add in the items to the left of the epic item you want now 99 percent of the time here it's four rares required to add in to get that epic piece whether this be an accessory an armor piece or a weapon the problem with Throne and Liberty at the moment is it's missing that rare ink that they somehow forgot to add into the game. This eliminates the method of crafting those rare lithographs, which means you can't craft any of this rare gear. And before someone tries to sell me, you can use ornate coins to purchase the rare ink from the shop. It sells you the precious ink used for crafting precious lithographs, not rares. I tried and tested this and wasted ornate coins, so do not do this guys. So in regards to crafting rares, for the lithograph book, you actually can't. But you can still get these rare items. And while to find out how you do this, simply highlight the item, select upon it, and what pops up are the places and enemies you can farm this item from. Now with this, the first two items can drop from your everyday enemies, found in abundance around the map. Now the second two items always seem to be a much, much harder enemy to find and then farm, with most coming from dynamic events and so forth. So you really have to get lucky with these specific rare items if you're chasing an epic item from the lithograph book. I even thought about trying to farm for green items uh, for that said rare item required for that epic item. But nope, it seems as though they thought about this too. The last two items required for any epic item within this lithograph book cannot be obtained through the lithograph book, not as far as I can see anyway. So no matter what item you want from the lithograph book, where you want to claim the item from, the last two items here more or less always come from certain harder to find and hard to farm enemies, whether that be greens, rares or even purples. So trying to work your way up in a pyramid type farm is going to be even longer for you. So although you can get epic items from the lithograph book, I mean it isn't a fast way in doing so in my opinion. Opinion. Okay, so another way you have a chance of getting epics is by opening precious blessing 
pouches. Now there are multiple ways of getting these precious blessing pouches, but there's only a chance that you'll get an epic upon you opening these pouches. I've opened 15 in total, well 15 I opened at once, I purchased them from the ornate coin shop, and from these guys I got 3 epics, so they definitely have a chance of dropping them, like I said, but it isn't a massive chance. Now the first way to get them is like I said from the ornate coin shop. Ornate coins come from you finding those purple pages, you get 3 per purple page you find in and around the map but you also get these i believe on a daily from your mail so yes keep an eye on them too now you are limited to 15 of these pouches per month from the shop and they cost 45 ornate coins each you can also use your contract coins which you get for completing those resistance contracts which we mentioned earlier uh, and then you can go to the contract coin merchant you can purchase one per day it will cost you 200 of these coins which is a little steep which isn't a guaranteed epic but yeah that's another option you can also get these guys from the allied resistant forces contracts too now these are contracts that require you to normally enter one of those open world dungeons where they have to be completed but to be honest they're never really much of a problem in doing now to get these guys you actually have a chance for them to drop from those precious blessing pouches so you can get these allied resistance forces contracts from the precious blessing pouches and then when you complete these contracts you can get the precious blessing pouches so it's just like a cycle on repeat here now you can also guys get six bundles of these allied resistance forces contracts from these sundries merchant which they cost you gold to buy so it's six per week but each one you buy once opened up rewards you four of the allied resistance forces contracts and each one you complete will reward you those precious blessing pouches for a chance of those epics now the Sundry's Merchant also sells the Tailed or Tower versions which require you to defeat the secret dungeon bosses. These do not reward you these precious blessing pouches so keep that in mind. They can also get their precious blessing pouches guys from certain resistance contracts too. Only within Kanina Village does commonly have these but yes completing these contracts will give you a precious blessing pouch. But yes, these pouches do have a chance of dropping those epic pieces, so you may as well take that chance and open them while you can, if you can. Now with the Allied Resistance Forces contracts we just talked about, upon you completing these guys, once you do, it rewards you a single Abyss currency, so one per Allied Resistance Forces contract that you do. These are then used within any crafting vent that you purchase precious epic equipment chests. They do require 40 of the Abyss currency each though. So you will need to do 40 of the Allied Resistance Forces contracts to open one of these chests. But it is just another way of getting that epic gear I feel you need to know about. Again, the contracts you want for the Abyss tokens come from the Allied Resistance Forces contracts that you get from the Blessing Pouches and the Sundry's Merchant which limits you to picking up 6 bundles per week. But remember each one offers 4 contracts. So that's 6 times 4 guys which is 24 contracts per week just from the Sundry's Merchant. Also guys the Tailed or Tower Allied Resistance Forces contracts they can also purchase from the Sundry's Merchant. They do not give you those Abyss tokens so keep that in mind. Okay, so another way you can earn epic gear is by defeating world bosses. Now, if you pull up your map, bring up the menu, tab across to the right, and you'll see a schedule here of world bosses and dynamic events, and when they will spawn in. Some PvE, some PvP, which at the same time are utterly wild fun and brutal. Now, it's rare that these world bosses will drop you epics, but I've seen them do so. I've never had one myself though, but yeah. Another way to get epics which ties into those world bosses is through the special resistance medals. These are awarded to you upon you taking part in taking down a world boss. So upon you taking out a world boss guys, even if you don't get any specific loot drops there and then, you still get that world boss chest, which upon you opening up from your inventory rewards you a special resistance medal. I believe it's one per chest. You may get more, I'm not sure. 
Now, if you head to any crafting vendor, you will see that you can use 40 of these special resistance medals to craft precious lithographs for certain items, which, as you know, is the foundation of crafting actual epic gear. But it will take, like I said, 40 of those special resistance medals. So that's a minimum of 40 world bosses here. But it is still another way, guys, of getting that epic gear. Another way to get that epic gear is by using dimensional soul shards. These are an item you get from a few different places. Firstly, you get the dimensional soul shard chests, uh, which reward you multiple of these soul shards, and they come from the battle pass. So yeah, if you complete the battle pass, you should have a few of these chests already. Another way to get these soul shards are by completing those level 50 dungeons. Upon you completing them, you get at least one per drop. I believe uh, there may be one dungeon here which offers you more. But hey, you also may have noticed as well that these dimensional soul shards are named after the level 50 dungeon bosses. So with those soul shards, how do you get those epics? Well, it's quite straightforward. If you go to any crafting vendor, then go down to that chest section. Here, guys, you can see chests which require you to have these soul shards. But it is 80 of that one particular one to get that chest. But once you have that said chest, you can then open it up and pick the epic of choice from said chest. And there are multiple chests here you can pick from, but you will need, like I said, 80 of the individual one specific soul shard. Now you can also, guys, with these shards, craft the dimensional essences with each vendor. These cost 60 of those soul shards, 10 of each. Uh, once you have the dimensional essence, you can then use it at the crafting vendors to purchase the precious epic chests, which then will allow you to pick an epic items so yeah another way of getting epics guys now another way of getting epic gear is by crafting it but this part of the game in my opinion is definitely pay for convenience because when it comes to crafting epics in this game you firstly need to get that precious lithograph now to do this guys is either one or two ways you can purchase the lithograph from the auction house which takes a lucent and then go and craft the item Lucent is this game's currency which you use your real life money for. So yeah, and to be honest the prices people are asking for these lithographs from the auction houses is out of this world. The only other way I'm aware of getting lithographs to craft the epic item you want is to actually already have that epic item. Then use a blank lithograph to turn your epic item into a lithograph. Now, once you have this lithograph from here, and it's what people are doing in selling these, but it's from this point, guys, you can actually craft this lithograph into an item, which really won't make sense to many, many people. But let me explain why people do this. For one reason, it's because you can sell this lithograph in the auction house for quite a bit of uh, that lucent. Or guys, when it comes to crafting it, it's all down to that crafting success where you can sell the actual item and not just the lithograph in the auction house. This all depends on that crafting success. It's why some items in the game you've acquired you can't sell in the auction house. It's also why some items you've crafted you can't sell in the auction house too. So yeah guys, these precious lithographs, you can either get them via purchasing them from the auction house for that lucent or already having the epic item applying a blank lithograph to it and turn your epic item into a lithograph which yeah goes against the purpose in the actual whole point of this video okay so what about open world drops from your everyday enemies can these drop those epic items well guys albeit super rare in that regard it is possible I'm seeing at the moment many, many people getting epics drop from the Shadowed Crypt open world dungeon. But it isn't just here which you can have those enemies drop you that epic gear. Now it's actually hard to pinpoint uh, drops because firstly you need a list of items you can look through to see where they're obtained from. Uh, you can use a lithograph book for this but it is limited because not every epic item is here. Uh, but to do this guys, uh, select on the item, then select uh, all menus and then selecting that obtained from option. Uh, it will show you a list of enemies or a certain enemy where this epic gear piece can drop from. Another way to see where items can drop and an easy way to do so in my opinion is probably the auction house because it normally shows all available items in the game, even if none are up for sale. 
simply go to the auction house, select the category of item you want. If the item isn't highlighted, it means it's not for sale, but you can still find it anyway. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see said items, which are just like grayed out. Then guys, select the see all menu and selecting the obtain from option and it'll show you which enemy you can get this from. If you select on the enemy, it will take you to where it is on the map. I mean, most of the epics here are going to be dropping from specific enemies during specific events and so forth. So it's going to be a real hard way to obtain them. But hey, it still may be an option you may want to know about. Okay, so what about arena coins? This is something I'm not seeing many, many people talk about. So these can be used within the arena merchant to purchase certain items. Now arena coins have to be claimed upon you earning them from the 3v3 arena activity you unlock at level 50. This is PvP by the way. I myself haven't done any of this yet. But what I have saw and read online is you can only get 6 of these arena coins per week. Which isn't really enough for a single piece. 2 weeks though and you are gravy. Okay, so lastly guys, the guild raids. Now these are something your guild will unlock upon you leveling up that guild, uh, you unlock these guild raids. And these also give you a chance to earn those epic items, which upon you completing these raids guys, you have a chance of earning that epic gear. Well, it isn't like open world dungeons or co-op dungeons or anything of that matter. These rewards are then given out via the guild distribution section to guild members. So once you do a raid guys, your rewards will go here and then you select the members who did that raid with you and give them said rewards. It's a great way to help other players out if they're after a certain piece and so forth. So keep that in mind. But there we have it guys. Most if not all ways you can earn epics in Throne and Liberty. If I've missed out a simple way, please let us know down below within that comment section. But there we have it guys. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. I apologize about my code. I probably sound even crazier than normal. Uh, again, I apologize. But if you did enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps me out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.